What is going on here? It is Klein Kaiser back with another video. Today we're going to be going over my top five favorite items in Maple Story. Now there are a lot of awesome items in Maple Story that give really cool effects. So most of them are from Marvel and Philo, but there are some from other places as well. So let's dive right into it. Number five on our list, we are picking BOD, and BOD stands for Breath of Divinity. Now BOD is an item that you obtain from Philo books and Marvel. There's an extremely small chance to get a Breath of Divinity ring. It is a ring and people usually equip it in their fourth slot. I used to have it in my fourth slot as well right here. And it can go all the way up to 22 star, but most people just leave at 17 because right now it's worth a lot. Uh, I think it's like around almost $2,000 uh, worth of NX. It's a very nice ring. It, what it does, it basically gives you a second HP bar. And that HP bar gets regenerated each time you hit a monster and your attack actually registers. So doing any sort of damage to any monster will basically regenerate your shield. And there's a cooldown of, every, of 60 seconds on that shield. Once it breaks, you have to wait. Uh, whatever the remaining cooldown is before you can use it again. Now the reason I put this at number 5 is it's a very broken item but I think it takes away a lot of the game mechanics and actually makes the game a lot less fun. Now it's okay if you want to use this as sort of like a cheat code and whatever else you want to do but keep in mind that having a bot will basically eliminate a lot of the needs for mechanics and honestly Back then, and maybe a little bit to this day, people who have bots are generally viewed as somebody with no hands and no control of the boss, and they just wail their way through a boss. And essentially, that's how they get away with clearing bosses on a weekly basis. But that's just the general popular opinion. Uh, I somewhat agree with it, and I somewhat have uh, disagreements, but we'll get into that in another video. Number four on our list, we have Battleroid. And Battleroid is this thing right here. And what it does, it basically acts as a buff freezer. And it's basically a, a permanent buff freezer that you can use a billion times and trillion times and they'll never run out. Now, generally, I think buff freezers can be purchased in any major towns like Lee Free, Hennessy's, Elderstein, big towns like that. And you talk to. Matilda and she gives you the option to buy buff freezers um, five a day and you can do this as many times as you want but the thing with these buff freezers is that one they don't stack on top of each other and so you if you buy them you'll have like five less inventory slots let's say you buy five right you have five less inventory slots and also they are Temporary, which essentially they used to be permanent and they stack together, which is a lot better. But now that I have a battle roy, it basically acts as a buff freezer and you can use it unlimited times. And it also gives a little nice feature, which is a shop. So you can just uh, use the battle roy shop by double clicking on it and oops, double clicking on it and it'll give you a shop for recharging stars, buying uh, pet food, stuff like that, and selling items. So that's a little nice feature and I think this is a very essential item for anyone who wants to go bossing just because the buff freezers are so annoying to buy and stack together and the total temporary thing is just I'm not with it and now we have item number three and uh, the third one on our list is vac pet and it is these things right here that I have they are also called petite luna pets as you see on the top middle heading where it says Petite Luna. Same thing with this guy. And these VAC pets are extremely useful because they're able to loot across a pretty huge range and uh, above platforms, like one level above, sometimes even two levels, depending on how, t how tall and short the actual map is. So it's a very nice feature, especially when you're training, farming. You basically don't yet even have to go anywhere and they'll basically do all your hard work for you so it's extremely nice to have and I just absolutely love it love having a back pet it's a very nice quality of life thing 
it's not mandatory by any means, but most of these items I mentioned here are not mandatory, but it's extremely nice to have. Next item that we have at place number two is Frenzy Totem. Now Frenzy Totem is an extremely OP item. It is so broken, which is why it resells for a lot of uh, money and items. So Frenzy Totem, for those of you who don't know, is it basically is a skill that you activate and it lasts for 10 minutes on the map that you cast it on. And for those 10 minutes, the spawn of the map is increased by a huge amount, as well as the spawn timer is decreased, which means faster spawn cycles and more mobs. So Frenzy is extremely broken item to have, especially when you're soloing something in an event map. Uh, some event maps, you can basically drop a Frenzy totem cast and they'll spawn like crazy and you can go wild and finish your stuff in one third of the time. So when I had a frenzy back then, I basically uh, would drop a frenzy cast on dailies and I could finish my dailies in basically one third or even one fourth of the time as opposed to no frenzy cast. So frenzy is an extremely broken item, especially in Oz. It would help a lot in Oz too and make Tower of Oz pretty fast. But yeah, the reason I place Frenzy in number two and not number one is that Frenzy totems, they have its use, but I don't think it's that important compared to what number one will be. So I'm keeping Frenzy totem at number two because it's very situational. You really only use it for training, farming, and things of that nature. Whereas number one is going to be a lot more useful and something that you're going to use basically every day. And for number one, we have the all-amazing Hyper Teleport Rock. Hyper Teleport Rock is a godsend. Now, I got this item a long time ago. I think I got this item back when MapleStory almost first started. Obviously, I'm exaggerating a tiny bit, but, you know, I got this a long time ago. So, yeah, permanent Hyper Teleport Rock. Extremely useful. Um, so with this item, you can basically travel to any place that you want. You just basically open up the map and just double click on the location and hit enter and it'll teleport you there. You can basically access almost any area that you regularly have access to. And it saves so much time when it comes to doing dailies, uh, weeklies, whatever the case may be. It's extremely nice to have and I use this at least 10 times a day. So definitely a must-have and that's why it earns its place as number one on our list here now i do want to have some honorable mentions there are some very nice items that then make this list and the first thing that we have on our honorable mentions is fire starter ring now fire starter ring basically fire uh, increases the burning stage of a map to a hundred percent as long as the burning is 90 or below it's a very nice item, but it's very situational because you only train and uh, maybe sell FS cast with it. So that's why I didn't put it in my top five. But nevertheless, I still think this is a very nice and useful item. And another item that I didn't put is called the Ring of Torment. So a Ring of Torment reduces your final damage by 30%, but you get 15% EXP extra. Now the reason I don't like this item is... It reduces your damage by way too much in my opinion, especially with the newer areas of Grandise. You have to be pretty well to actually put this item to decent and good use. Otherwise, you won't be able to one-shot. And for some classes like my class that relies heavily on summons, using this ring is extremely not beneficial. So I place this at uh, one of the lowest ranks here. And I think this is one of the least useful items in the list. Now another honorable mention that we have is called Lucid Earrings and Lucid Earrings gives a skill called Lucid's Nightmare which basically is a also known as a Lucid Bind and it can stun 15 enemies for 9 seconds and has a cooldown of about 2 minutes so it's pretty useful for bossing but I've made my way to all of my bosses without it so I don't think this is a must, and which is why I didn't put this as my top 5 list. But it definitely has its place in bossing. And then the last item that I have is an Outlaw Hearts. Now Outlaw Hearts don't have any special skill that makes them so great, but 
The good thing about Outlaw Heart is that they can be peace off, and they are actually the only heart that can be peace off. Titanium Hearts, Fairy Hearts, One Joy Hearts, those cards cannot be peace off at all. So what that means is once you equip them, you can't trade them ever again. And I think that's very dis advantageous so if you want to quit or change to another main this heart is basically stuck with you forever whereas an outlaw heart is going to be you know peace walkable you can trade it in for another stat or you can sell it and then buy another one of a uh, different stat so you have options so it's very nice to have an outlaw heart which is why it makes the list in our honorable mentions so that's it for this video guys let me know what you guys think in the comments below do you think this video was correct in the ranking of the list? Do you guys have your own top 5 rankings? If you do, let me know what they are. And of course, again, these are my top 5 rankings. So yours may or may not be you know, the same as mine. And as always, if you like the video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more content from me. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.